everyone um, welcome back to the channel um, in today's tutorial I'm going to show you the parametric facade system built by Shuko uh, this is going to be a two-part series in the first part uh, we're just going to look at um, how this panel geometry is developed and then in the second part we're going to actually look at a series of panels uh, how we can uh, basically use um, uh, data to uh, create this sort of undulating panel system um, so it's going to be a two-part series, um, so if you're interested in this content, please stick around. Uh, I would recommend you to watch the second tutorial as well. Um, so this is actually, if you um, look carefully to the system, it's basically a rectangular panel uh, with four faces. Uh, two of them are triangulated and uh, two of them are quads. Uh, they are rectangular pieces and they're all planar. So uh, we are going to do, uh, at first in Grasshopper, develop this parametrically and understand how um, we can create a custom parameter to actually move this line th that you see. And once we get that down, uh, then we can actually look at creating a series of it and uh, maybe making a multiple story facade system like this. Um, so let's begin. We're actually going to um, first develop a rectangle uh, panel. So we can actually do it here Let's actually make it a one by two ratio. Um, this is kind of, um, I guess this is one story. It could be almost up to three meters. You can also make it longer, but I'm going to keep this one to two ratio for now. Um, we can um, scale it up later. So I'm going to link it to Grasshopper as a surface. And technically this is basically um, everything I need to develop the system. I'm going to first uh, switch to the perspectival view and then uh, we can actually deconstruct it so that we can access individual pieces, edges, vertices and faces. So um, if you look at the um, vertices of how this uh, panel is drawn, we can actually create uh, a point list here. Um, I have a high parameter here. Let's make it smaller. Um, so you can see we the, the the surface actually goes clockwise. So it goes zero, one, two, three. Um, so what we want to do is uh, basically create an edge in between uh, the surface um, between these two edges, and then um, connect uh, that edge to these surrounding edges. So I'm going to show you uh, what that looks like in a second. Um, uh, but first, let's actually get to that middle um, point. So how can we actually drive that middle uh, corner, middle point? So I'm going to do list item. So let's look at our edges. So we have four edges and they go from, they will basically follow the indices of these elements. So you can access them with list item. And if you attach a number slider here, you can actually go through them. So this is zero, one, two, three. So it's following basically these indices in the clockwise fashion. Um, so what I want to do is draw a line between um, the midpoint of zero and one and the midpoint of two and three. So how can we do that? So this is the first edge at the index zero. Uh, you can actually make a copy of this, but if you have just four items, you can also add uh, more indices here, and these will be basically the subsequent edges. So what I mean by that is basically this zero index edge is here, and the second edge is here. So we want to connect these two edges with the midline. So I can also delete this. Um, so in order to connect it, you can actually do point on curve, um, if you, let's do point on curve. So these are the middle points. So if you draw a line, you can see that uh, this line is drawn between these two edges. Uh, but the problem here is um, basically these are controlled by two um, disconnected parameters. So what I want to do is actually make them uh, parallel. So you can see that um, the first line is actually going from zero to one. So the lower value is closer to zero. And the second line is going from two to three. So this requires basically a higher number 
and uh, their sum will be basically one, right? So you can do an evaluate curve here. And what that does is we can actually reparameterize this curve, which will make its length normalized. So it will go from zero to one, meaning the, the beginning starting point will be at zero and the end point will be at one. And if you want to graph the midpoint, it will be 0 0.5, right? So it will work almost like a percentage. So let's say I want to get uh, a point at 25% uh, length along this corner. So that's how we can actually do it. So zero will give me zero and one will give me this um, corner here. 0 0.5 will be in the middle. The reason why I'm doing it this way is because um, I want to make this parameter connected to the second evaluation, the second line. And if I draw a line between these two, now I want to com combine them so that I can c control them with the same um, parameter. But the problem is, of course, these lines are facing in different directions. So what we need to do is basically uh, whatever parameter I'm using here, I need to basically correlate it with the opposing edge. So you can simply do it by subtracting uh, this value from one, because um, that will basically correspond to the remaining length, right? So if I evaluate this opposite edge at 0 0.78, then that will give me a corresponding point. So this will basically give me um, a parallel line that moves along this edge. And that's what uh, we want actually. So I'm going to delete this. Um, but what if we want to actually move these points outside of the surface? How can we do that? So um, remember that our surface is actually uh, basically made of, uh, we, have, we found this edge, but we want to um, basically move it off the surface. And if this surface is actually um, curvilinear or some other geometry, then we need this movement to be perpendicular to the surface, right? So how, where is that uh, perpendicular uh, vector? We need to find that vector first. So um, we evaluated the points and we can basically get a vector that points in the perpendicular direction of the surface. And there's a simple way of doing it. So you can go back to the face we can get the area of that face, which will give us the central point. Then uh, we can evaluate um, the surface at that location. So if, if you do evaluate surface at this uh, centroid, that will give us a plane. And this plane, um, actually this won't give us the plane because the, the UV values do not correspond to the surface. So what you need to first do is you need to find the closest points on the surface. So if you um, pull this point onto the surface, then this gives you the UV parameter of the midpoint, which is 5, 2.5. So if you evaluated these UV points, now I have a plane oriented to the surface. And this is really important because um, now we have a perpendicular vector direction facing up. So if I do a vector display, you can see that the vector is now facing down. And the reason for that is probably um, this is going clockwise, right? Uh, that's why the vector normally is facing down. But if you flip the surface, now the point information doesn't change, but the uh, vector is facing up. So it's kind of, uh, we can have control over the direction of this vector. And I want to use this vector actually to move these points outside of the surface. So you can simply do it by moving uh, the points. So I want to move this point using this vector. So you can use this as a translating vector, but you can also do um, some sort of amplitude for this. So let's say that we want to move it by some amount. So um, I can simply use it as is, but that will give me uh, one unit measure. But if I want to move it a bit more then I can use an amplitude and let's do 2.5. And if I move it this much, then this basically gives me a higher point. I can also make another one to the opposite edge. And now if I connect these two, um, now I basically have a parametric line that is parallel to the surface. I can control its location 
and I can control its uh, offset from the surface and that's basically everything we need to make um, the other panels so once we have this edge uh, the rest is pretty straightforward actually um, there's one more thing I want to show you which is you can see that these edges are kind of pulled in a bit so this line is actually not um, not the same length as this edge this shorter edge so we have to shorten it a bit so there are a bunch of ways you can do this you can evaluate new points on this line or you can simply scale it down uh, we can scale the line down using its center uh, point and curve and we can specify some amount here so let's say 0 0.5 that will give us a shorter edge in the middle So that's basically the new edge we are faced with, and we can also make it parametric. So if you do it one, that will be the full length. If you do it 0 0.7, that will be 70% of that length. Now I have this line here, and I wanna basically get the surfaces now. Um, but before I do that, I wanna make sure that the normal directions are working. So the reason why I did it with the surface normals is because if I rotate the surface, I want to make sure that this line is um, always facing outward. Um, so I'm going to turn off ortho. Uh, you can turn this on uh, with the gumball here. You can turn it on here. And then if you rotate it, you can see that um, no matter what the rotation is, um, my surface is basically working fine, right? So this line is offset perpendicular to the surface. Now I'm going to get the endpoints of um, this line so what I want to do is connect this edge to this point so let's do that first uh, we, we need to find that edge all the edges are here so you can simply uh, create new curve containers here and connect them to the edges so these are the shorter edges these are the longer edges so I can make another copy of these two combine them and bring them over here so these will be extrude to point. So I want to extrude this edge to the starting point. That will give me this triangle here. And we can make a copy. And I want to connect this point to this edge, right? So these are the two side triangles. Now I need two more lines, which are basically this edge needs to be lofted to this edge. So let's bring those two surfaces. Um, these are the additional curves. So we need to, uh, we have the curve here. Um, actually, there, there, there are a bunch of ways, again, you, to do this. You can create a planar surface. Uh, you can loft. You can make a polyline and then do boundary surface. I'm basically going to loft these. So um, one way of doing it is we have the scale down line. So you can simply do a loft here. So this goes here and this goes here so this came out fine but this didn't and the reason is because this edge is flipped um, remember that this is going from point one to point two whereas this line is going in the opposite direction um, so you can simply do a flip flip curve and flip uh, one of these geometries you can flip the edge and do the loft again and that's basically it. So we have now created all the four surfaces of our facade panel, right? So, um, and it's parametric. How do we know it? Uh, because we can move around this evaluation and you can see this moving along the surface. I can also move this that controls the depth of the uh, panel and this controls the width of the midline. Right, so we can make it shorter or thicker. So there are a bunch of parameters that we can control. Uh, and if I make it vertical, this also works. I'm actually going to hide uh, these here so that you can see. Um, this kind of works in all directions. So um, now that our panel is done, we're going to switch to uh, making this as a list. Uh, so I'm going to work with a polygon boundary and then uh, populate some more 
variations of this um, facade panel. So if you want to see how this could be applied to a facade system, uh, stick around.